Within almost every state in the Union, there's some kind of geographical rivalry between one area and another. North and South California, East and West Pennsylvania, Texas and Austin. But the most famous divide is, of course, between North and South Jersey. Now, some people will try to convince you that Central Jersey exists, but these people are liars and not to be trusted. The division has existed since the state's colonial days, although back then it was East and West Jersey. Each side fell into the orbit of one of the large cities just across the border, New York in the east and Philadelphia in the west. New Jersey operated like two half colonies in a trench coat pretending to be one. Politically, the west was populated by conservative Quakers, and the east leaned more radical. So when the war for independence broke out, the east naturally saw the pacifist conservatives in the west as actively hindering the war effort. So East and West got off on the wrong foot, and the animosity continued long after the war. As its own state, New Jersey almost immediately ran into money troubles. Pennsylvania and New York both raised tariffs on any out-of-state business that came in through Philadelphia and New York City. Trade with the two cities was the lifeblood of both West and East Jersey, and these tariffs would cost New Jersey merchants something like 40,000 pounds a year. Farmers weren't doing much better. The lack of hard money circulating the state made it almost impossible to pay taxes or interest on debts. East Jersey proposed another run of paper currency, passing it despite some resistance from the West. But New Jersey needed a more permanent fix. Despite their mid-sized population, New Jersey creditors owned about 10% of the national debt, meaning that of all the money that the federal government owed, 10% of it had to eventually be repaid to New Jersey lenders, with interest. They tried to leverage this by calling upon Congress to start paying creditors what they were owed. Congress was like, oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Hey, while we're talking about money, remember those requisitions that you are required to pay us? Yeah, for some reason we haven't received any of them yet. Would you mind sending that over? New Jersey and the federal government went back and forth like this for years, and neither side got the other to pay. But if New Jersey could somehow give the federal government the authority to raise its own revenue, it would be able to pay them back and get much needed hard money back into the economy. Plus, it would allow them to trade with their larger neighbors without paying their exorbitant tariffs. All the way back when the states were drafting the Articles of Confederation, New Jersey was pretty much the only state pushing to give Congress the power to tax and regulate trade. After that effort failed, they supported pretty much every revenue reform that came after, like the failed impost of 1781, the failed impost of 1783, the failed attempt to let Congress tax states based on population rather than land value, and the failed proposal to temporarily allow Congress to regulate trade on behalf of the states. Thanks to the fact that all amendments required unanimous approval from the states, any reform was dead on arrival. Fortunately, New Jersey was not the only state that was worried about this. Virginia had called a convention to be held in Annapolis, Maryland, where they would discuss giving Congress the power to tax and regulate trade. Unfortunately, when their delegates got to the convention, the place was a ghost town, except for a few delegates from Virginia and the Mid-Atlantic. As they waited for more states to show up, they started discussing their instructions. Each state legislature had sent their delegates to discuss matters of interstate trade alone every state except New Jersey. New Jersey's legislature had given them permission to talk about interstate trade as well as other important matters that may be necessary to their common interest and permanent harmony. That was all the justification they needed. They used it as the legal basis for calling a new convention in Philadelphia, where they would discuss fixing every single problem of the Articles of Confederation. The federal convention gave New Jersey pretty much everything they were looking for, after some compromise. The states would lose the power to raise their own trade barriers, Congress would have a reliable revenue stream, and to cap it all off, New Jersey would be equally represented in the Senate. Ratification would be a cakewalk. The legislature called a convention, and delegates met in the Blazing Star Tavern in Trenton that December. Based on the official record, nobody had any substantial objections or concerns. As much as East and West disagreed, they understood that they both had a lot to gain from ratification. From the 14th to the 17th, delegates went through the Constitution article by article, and finally on the 18th, they took a vote on ratification. New Jersey ratified the Constitution by a vote of 38 to 0. 
Within a two-week period, the Constitution was already approved by three states, and the Federalists were showing no signs of slowing down. The next convention would begin at the end of the month in the Deep South. Georgia was up next. Mm -hmm.